All right, so today we're going to be showing you how to configure destination net on a Juniper firewall. Now I'm just going to run over the lab for you quickly. What we've got here on the left-hand side is just our private network. We've got a server 192.168.10.1, and uh, that is connected just to a switch, which is then connected to a firewall with internet access. And the goal of the lab today is to have this PC here access a web service on this PC over here. Now, I just want to show you one or two things here. If we go to this PC, you'll see that we are able to actually reach 45.0.0.2, right? And uh, that's because this PC resides on the internet and we have internet access on this side. But if we then go to this PC over here, We'll just uh, once again go in here. If we do a ping 192.168.10.1, it's not going to work because the internet does not know about private ranges, right? So then if the internet doesn't know about private ranges, how do we actually publish a web service on this private range? Now, let's just have a look at our config here and let's go to the firewall. If we do a show display set, what we've got here on the firewall, now remember this is the private firewall on the customer premises. We've got uh, two zones, one is uh, internal, the other one is external, right? And then we have the two interfaces, GE000 and GE001 in their respective zones. And then I just have a policy to allow traffic from internal to external, right? So this is just uh, typical what you do for internet access. And then I do have a source net rule. If you are unsure of how to configure or why we configure source net, we've done a video on that as well. I'll uh, link it at the end. But here you can see that uh, traffic destined to anywhere will just do source net interface, right? So then traffic will look like it's coming from this public interface on the firewall. This is the private routable interface connecting to the customer switch. All right, and then we just have a default route as would be typical in your firewall config. Now, if we have a look at the config here, I've just uh, got this icon here to simulate internet. This is not truly on the internet, otherwise we wouldn't have uh, full control over this. So this is just uh, simulated, but in practice, it will work exactly the same. So what we first need to do is we need to configure a destination net, All right? So on the firewall, we'll just go into edit security net destination right and now we will have to configure a rule set okay so we'll just uh, set rule set i'm just going to name it dnet for now and yeah you just need to specify from which zone it's going to be so we're just going to say from zone external because the traffic is obviously coming in from the external side so just to make it a bit easier let's just go into that rule set so edit rule set uh, d net right so now we're just going to configure a rule within this rule set i'm just going to name it uh, rule one sorry it's edit rule and then you give it a name rule one so currently there's nothing configured yeah so what we'll do is we'll say uh, set match destination address. Right, so what we want to achieve here is this is the public facing interface, right? So this is what the rest of the world sees, this uh, 42.222.22.1 address. So we are going to say that if traffic is destined for this address, then we want to net it to this IP over here. Some call it port forwarding, some call it PET, others just call it uh, destination net or DNAT. So anyway, what we're going to specify here is the public IP of the firewall. So it's a 42.222.22.1, right? We're just going to uh, include the subnet, so slash 32. And then we are going to say what should happen to traffic once it hits this rule. So we obviously want to net it, right? So then we say, then destination net, right? And now you have to specify a pool. And I'm just going to name this pool web server. Now, this uh, pool can consist of many IPs, many servers in the back end, doesn't really matter. But for the example in this case, we're just going to use one server. Now, if we just do a show you there, might be just an error there. So you still need to define the net pool name, right? So we can just go up and uh, up again, just under destination. So we say set pool and we say web server 
And if we do a question mark, it's just going to ask us to specify the address. And in this case, it's going to be 192.168.10.1 32. All right, if we now do a show, we shouldn't uh, be presented with any errors. All right, and that's pretty much it. That's how you configure your destination net to a specific IP. Now, you can go a little bit further in the rule set. You can actually configure port numbers, etc. but we'll get to that. So let's go ahead and commit this. All right, so let's have a look at uh, the server here. This is now from the external side and we want to connect to the internal side right and the public ip is 42.222.222.1 right and it's not going to work all right so what we need to do here is we need to configure a security policy obviously all right so we're going to edit security policies from zone external to zone internal all right now i know this might be a little bit confusing but let me try and explain it to you quickly so the public IP exists on this GE001 interface. Traffic is coming from this side and it's going to hit that publicly facing interface, right? Now you'd be forgiven to think that you would need to allow traffic to this interface, right? But uh, unfortunately, you'd be wrong. So the way NAT works on Juniper is that um, NAT is checked first before a security policy is checked. Okay, so in the traffic flow, NAT occurs first before the firewall actually checks whether there is a security policy allowing the traffic or not. So when you are setting up your firewall rule, you need to think of what the final destination address is, right? In our case, it is this one. Now, if we have a look at where this address actually resides, if we do a run show root 192.168.10.1, right, it's going via this interface here. And if we then go into the security zone, type in it security zone, security zone, internal, you'll see that this interface belongs to the internal security zone, right? So you always need to think of your final IP address, the final destination, right? So in this case, our final destination is this server over here, and that is part of the internal zone, or that interface is in the internal zone. This interface is in the external zone, so traffic would need to be allowed from external to internal. Now, I know other firewall vendors do it slightly differently. Sometimes um, they actually do check for security policy before that. So just make sure of what uh, your vendor is actually doing with the security flow and in which order it's taking place. Right, so let's just go back into our firewall here. So if we go into top edit security policies, once again, we'll be doing it from zone external to zone internal, right? All right, sorry, my screen just cleared. So we're just going to configure the policy from zone external to zone internal, right? We'll just uh, name the policy allow web, edit policy allow web, because for this one, we only want to allow web traffic, right? So then we will say set match source address. We'll make it any, because this is from the internet, we don't want to use a specific IPs. Then we'll say set match destination address. And over here, we'll just use our web servers address 168.10.1 slash 32. And for the application, we are going to be using the Juno's defaults of uh, HTTP and HTTPS. So it's Juno's HTTP and Juno's HTTPS, right? And then we'll say set then permits right if we have a look at uh, our policy you can see it's it's coming from any source the destination is our web server ip and the application is juno's http and https all right so now if we do a commit it's not going to work because we still need to configure this address book entry right so let's just uh, go ahead and do that so we do set security address book address global sorry address and uh, we can just uh, copy and paste this one twice. So the first one is the name of the address book entry, and the second one is actually the IP, including the subnet. Right, so now if we do a commit, that should all work well. So then if we go back to this PC over here, and hopefully if we hit refresh, it'll just work. Right, and there you go. So now we've got our web server up and running with a destination net.
I'm just going to do a show display set here for you so you can actually just see what uh, config we used. You can just pause here if you want to take note of anything. All right, so you'll remember that I did mention that you can actually do port forwarding as well or match the destination NAT only to a specific port. So what we'll do is we'll go into edit security NAT destination NAT. Uh, let's just go for that uh, rule set DNAT and uh, a rule rule one right so what we can do here is we can then say set match destination port we can make it port 80 and we can make it 443 right so if we do a show here now only traffic destined for these ports would be netted anything else destined for this ip would not be forwarded to this web server right let's just go ahead and commit this and make sure everything is still working as it should can go back to our public pc here yeah, we do a refresh and it's actually working now let's just see if https is actually working as well let's just uh, okay that and uh, it seems like it's working right all right there we go so http and https are both working now if you want to see whether your natural is actually working you can just do the following we just do a run show security net and what we can do is then specify destination and you can then check the rule right so if we do rule we can just do all or in our case we'll just do rule one now it'll actually tell you that we've got seven translation hits and uh, five successful sessions right and this will actually tell you that uh, it's from zone external that's the destination address that's the destination port and uh, where it's going to net it to all right and that's going to be it for this uh, tutorial hope you guys learned something hope you enjoyed this video if you did hit that like button hit that subscribe button and as always we hope to see you in the next one